If a community's economic distribution becomes slanted, then despotism stands a better chance to gain a foothold. A power scale is another important yardstick of despotism. It gauges the citizens' share in making the community's decisions. Communities which concentrate decision-making in a few hands rate low on a power scale and are moving towards despotism. And to find out what way it is likely to go in the future, you can rate it on economic distribution and information scales. The lower your community rates on economic distribution and information scales, the lower it is likely to rate on respect and power scales, and thus to approach despotism. John Milton once said that those who put out the people's eyes reproach them of their blindness. Indeed, minority rule corrupts the judgment of the majority. That's why only participation and self-management allow majorities to fully realize minority rights and private areas of decision-making. This means that current restrictions on participation in the name of minority rights actually enforce the herd mentality, undermining minority and individual freedom rather than protecting them. Undoubtedly, the greatest massacres and injustices in history have been perpetrated under the leadership or influence of elite minorities, not by the democratic impulse of the masses. Is it really surprising that the elite minority would try to convince the very majority over which they rule about the so-called tyranny of the majority? But no, that's not what democracy is about. how much say we have over our lives, how much influence we have over decisions. One person might say we should have majority rule. Everybody gets the same vote, we tally them up, 50% plus one wins. Another person might say we should have consensus. Um, our value for decision making is consensus. We should all at least abide or, or um, sign off on any decision. Another person might say, well, I think that maybe the one person should decide. Somebody might say that. I actually say all three and many other things. I don't think any of those are a principle. None of, they're all algorithms. They're all methods of arriving at a decision. But they're not a principle. One of them is right in one context, and one of them is right in another context. When you got dressed this morning, you didn't say to yourself, we should have a majority vote of everybody who's going to be there on what color socks I wear. And that made sense, because that decision, it was appropriate to make that way. On the other hand, if you wanted to carry around a boombox and play it in here during the talk, you don't get to decide that all by yourself. Why not? Because we all hear it. And the, the idea here is that people should have a say in decisions in proportion to the degree we're affected by them. Now, we're not going to be anal about this. It isn't to the sixth decimal point. But broadly speaking, people should impact decisions in proportion to the degree where they're affected by them. The norm, the name for this, I think, reasonably is self-management. If you want to control the state, you better have some fairly serious party and press mechanisms that work pretty well. In effect, you need to be financing the election campaigns. The public the mind thing. might have funny ideas about democracy, which say that we should not be forced simply to rent ourselves to the people who own the country. Rather, we should play a role in determining what those institutions do. That's democracy. Unless we move in that direction, uh, human society probably isn't going to survive. We now face the most awesome problems of human history. Uh, problems such as the likelihood of nuclear conflict. The destruction of a 
fragile environment. But why do you think more participation by a public, by the public, more democracy is the answer? It's the only hope that I can see that other values will come to the fore. I mean, if the society is based on control by private wealth, uh, it will reflect the value that the only real human property is greed and the desire to maximize personal gain at the expense of others. A small society based on that principle is ugly, but it can survive. A global society based on that principle is headed for massive destruction, and that's what we are. We have to have a mode of social organization that reflects other values that I think are inherent in human nature that people recognize. And that would be, I want to see exactly well, what you mean. I mean, what are human beings? I mean, in your family, for example. It's not the case that in the family, every person tries to maximize personal gain at the expense of others. Or if they do, it's kind of pathological. If you and I are, say, walking down the street and we see a, a, a child uh, eating a piece of candy and we see that nobody's around, we don't, and we happen to be hungry, we don't steal it. If we did that, it would be, it would be pathological. I mean, the idea of care for others and concern for other people's needs and uh, concern for a fragile environment that must sustain future generations. All of these things are part of human nature. These are elements of human nature that are suppressed in a social and cultural system which is designed to maximize personal gain. We must try to overcome that suppression, and that's in fact what democracy could bring about. The way humans conceive of themselves, their ability to act, to decide, to create, to produce, to inquire, a spiritual transformation.